So uh, uh, Kareem Hunt Sr., uh, Kareem Hunt, great player, his dad went to Instagram. We're going to rename them the Cleveland Instagrams. He said, Baker's scared to throw the ball. And it wasn't really just, you know, he didn't take the gloves off. He just said, this is the reality. I'm not, I'm not doing OBJ's dad here. It's just he's scared to throw the ball. So listen, the Cleveland Browns are not going to say this publicly. They've made their decision on Baker Mayfield. It, it, they've made them. They're not paying him 30, 40 million. It, it, they're not. There's too much turmoil. There's too much ego. There's too much snark. There's too much agitation. He's battling with somebody constantly. Tom Brady in 20 years has never had a single teammate call him out. A single dad, a single wife, a single teammate. Peyton Manning didn't either. Breaker Mayfield's had two in the last three weeks. Why? A lot of the Cleveland players just don't respect him. I mean, you don't have to love somebody, but if you call him out publicly, you don't respect him. You don't care about the pushback because you know I have a lot of people that agree with you. There are people in my business I respect. I don't like him necessarily, but I respect them, and they've got an alliance of people to back him up. Like, they know. These dads know. This is what people think in the locker room. They, they don't care about the pushback. It's always something with Baker. It's calling out the medical staff. It's calling out Duke Johnson. It's calling out a teammate. It's a, it's a player's dad. It's an injury. It's now, God, he's on his fourth coach. I see all these Brown fanboys now blaming Kevin Stefanski. He won coach of the year last year, and now he's a bum? It, it's like one of these things. Anybody out there ever had a friend, and you love the friend, but they can't get out of their own way. And at some point, you just kind of distance yourself from the friend. You're there for them. You like them. But you got to give yourself some space with your friend. They're just, they can't get out of their own way. Baker can't get out of his own way. And I've been saying this for years. Being a quarterback is about being quarterbackial. This is why I was not a big fan of Jameis Winston or Johnny Manziel. And I've been critical of Cam Newton and Baker Mayfield. It's more than just being a star and doing commercials and there's a lot of things here. There's a lot of variables. And, and as Albert Breer said, when you win, it's we. When you lose, it's me. That's a real thing for this position. That's why I've, that's why I've been highly critical. And I, I, I never understand why people argue with me on this. Like, I understand you arguing with me on a million things. Maturity is a huge component to quarterback. It's unfair, but you've got to be as mature as a 32-year-old at 22. You got Baker running from cops on a campus and getting in fights and doing gestures on the sideline in college. It's like, no, 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 no. That's, that's, he's not talented enough to overcome all the noise you get with him. Like Lamar Jackson last night was hideous for about 80% of the game. But for 20% of the game, he was spectacular. Lamar Jackson may not be everything, but he can just take games over a minute after he's awful. Like, Baker, you get all the agitation, and I get no upside. If you're going to give me all this nonsense, then you got to give me burst through the ceiling and give me five touchdown games. So, listen, Baker's 2-13. and 13. When a game's come down to the final drive, and he can tie it or take the lead, he's 2-13. and 13. And this is with the best offensive line and the best running back and Jarvis Landry and great tight ends. What happens with, when they pay him big and he's got, like, the 16th best O-line and, like, below average tight ends and running backs? They've made their decision. They're just not going to say it publicly. Baker Mayfield is not playing good football. And it, it's, it's come to – it's one thing to be a guy who doesn't have elite talent but elite leadership skills and elite football brain and go, like, you know – but here's what happens. A lot like the fear for Lamar Jackson, and, and you know, I caught heat earlier this year when people are like, oh, he's a great quarterback. Like, he's not a great thrower of the football. It's just good enough to hold it together for when he runs the football and you just hold your breath because you don't know if anybody can actually tackle him, right? And so yesterday, his poor throwing performance is not a stunner to me. It's disappointing. He's going to be better than that, but he's not, it's not what he does best. But again, the point about Lamar is the, the, the fear you have with Lamar Jackson is at some point in his career, he's either going to get hurt or he's going to get hit so much it slows him down. And if it slows you down a half step, well, that dramatically changes 
how he plays football, right? Because in order for everything to work for Lamar, he's got to have his legs because he's the most ridiculously, spectacularly talented athlete playing quarterback with his legs. And I'm not saying he can't throw. It's just not what he does best, right? He's just clearly, you know, he's not, that's not what he does best. Um, but the fear is at some point in time, he'll lose a half step, either from getting hurt or just getting hit or just the, the attrition of playing the NFL. And now all of a sudden he becomes not just a guy, but it, it, it completely changes how you play him. Well, Baker is dissimilar and similar, right? Obviously not the athlete of Lamar. I don't think he has the arm of, of, of Lamar Jackson either. Um, I do think he's a, probably a better, more accurate thrower of the football. But that's probably where, where, where it ends. The point is, though, for Baker... Because he's limited athletically, because he has a good, not great arm, um, everything has to go right for him in order to be at his best. Whereas, like Aaron Rodgers, I put Kyler Murray in this in this category. Uh, I would put Pat Mahomes in this category. Like those guys, like obviously Pat couldn't win a a championship last year with no offensive line. But he was able to get to a Super Bowl with a depleted offensive line. He's able to win a bunch of games this year without a running game. Like, it doesn't have to go perfect for Pat Mahomes to be Pat Mahomes or some version of Pat Mahomes. Or a lesser version of Pat Mahomes is still a great quarterback. Same thing with Aaron Rodgers. Same thing with Kyler Murray. Same thing with, with even with Russell Wilson. Like, you still believe that, you know, you could stop the running or whatever, but, man, they could still beat you with their arm. They still can find a way. Baker is, because the talent is a massive step below those guys, and now he's injured, and their offense, honestly, is more predicated on the run, and people are loading up and making him throw the ball and confusing him a little bit and putting him under duress. All of that stuff has come to roost. But the biggest thing is, when he, if he's not right, he actually shouldn't be playing because he's not good enough to play through that. But now, if you take him out, like a couple weeks ago when he was really banged up, if they would just sat him down for a couple weeks ago, like, look, man, we're just going to get you fully healthy before we put you back out there. But now, because he's been performing so poorly, if you take him out and put Case Keenum in, you're telling the whole world, he stinks, and we're just trying to stop the bleeding. Here's Baker Mayfield on the offense against Baltimore. We just need to make more plays. I mean, as simple as that sounds, I mean, there's plays there to be made. Certain situations where we need to have answers for the zero pressure stuff. I mean, they did a good job today of, you know, when they showed zero pressure and bailing out, and then when they weren't showing it, they brought it. So, I mean, they did a really good job today. We just need to make more plays. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we need to have a little bit more confidence. We need to go back, regroup, and, and, and just trust that uh, we have the guys to make those plays. Stug Gottlieb show here on Fox Sports Radio. Here's Kevin Stefanski talking talk about the possibility of quarterback change. Is a quarterback change at all a possibility? No. No. Let me, let me ask you a question. Why would we do that? Well, the point, you know, just aren't there. Yeah, it's not. That's We're not doing that. Uh, here's Lamar Jackson on his poor performance. Watch film and critique myself like I always do. I'm, I'm, I'm hot, dude. I threw four interceptions, three first half. Um, I feel like those drives, when, when the interceptions came, we could have did we could have did something on those drives. We could have put points on the board. And I just told my team, like, that's me. I owe y'all. Um, hey, well, look, which is the, the best way to say it. And obviously, Lamar, having won the game, he can still kind of smile. Was, whereas Baker, they lost the game, and he can have a frowny face. I mean, one team has Justin Tucker, the other one doesn't. That's a big thing. It's not that the Browns kicker's bad, but I, 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 here's what Kevin Stefanski gets. You can't sit him. I don't care what anybody's dad puts on Facebook. I don't care what anybody th- – you cannot take him out because what it does is it kills his ability to lead. If you don't know who the quarterback is, you don't know where your where your leadership comes from, and you you're, you become a rudderless ship. Kevin Stefanski is absolutely positively right. You gotta stick by your guy. You gotta ride or die with that guy. At the end of the year, if you want to make it, you know, you want to want to change things and and move on from him, that that's different. I mean, look, Stefanski was brought in there to change the culture and to support Baker Mayfield. That's your job, and you can't bail on him now. You just can't. You got to ride it out. Because the the second that you do, the second that you show any sort of hesitation, all those guys in the locker room know it's it's over. It's over. 
That was the big thing last year with Tua Tungavailoa. He was only a rookie, and it made total sense in the football sense of like, hey, let's have the rookie, and then we'll bring the veteran in when we want to win a game and maybe get to the playoffs. And they won 10 games, and it, it worked. But you can't do it now. That's why they had to get rid of, of Fitz. Because it cuts at the leadership of your quarterback. It doesn't mean that Tua is going to work. It doesn't mean that Baker is going to work. But the only chance of it working is if you have complete and total outward confidence in them. And the second you show a lack of confidence or bull them or think about pulling them, that, that's when it's over.